The real estate market in Nigeria has been growing at an exponential rate. In the year 2017, the Nigerian economy grew by 3.2%, which was far higher than the average 2% growth rate of other African countries. Now, this is expected to continue over the next 10 years as well, with projections showing that Nigeria will be among the top 10 economies by 2030. How possible is that? While this growth can be attributed to many factors such as real estate development across the country, innovations and increased demand for housing due to population growth among others. But one thing remains shocking. There are more people looking at buying homes or landed property than ever before, therefore causing the prices of properties to continue to rise exponentially as well. We will be looking at the ways the real estate market will change in 2023 and the opportunities thereof. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Welcome back. To tackle the spate of youth unemployment, a group, Enterprise Growth and Opportunities, Ego Foundation has trained university students on requisite skills they need to be employable. Rising from its project work skills at the University of Lagos, the organizer Tuluwa Sheolanio says the program will prepare participants for the world of entrepreneurship. The details in this report. Nigerian higher educational institutions equip graduates with hard skills while neglecting the development of employability skills which are core for the transitioning into the labor market as well as for workplace productivity. The lack of these skills in the profile of graduates keeps them in the pool of the unemployed no matter the degree of certification. You into the reality of the market. You can't just keep calling numbers. These students of the University of Lagos have converged on this hall to get well equipped. Toluha Sheolanio is the convener of this work skill project. He speaks more on the essence alongside others. Um, work skill is a project um, that's, that tends to bridge the gap, um, the labor market and, and the academic space. Um, a lot of young people um, lack the ability, like the basic ability, basic knowledge on what the industry or what the market wants, right? But then we then set up work skill to be able to um, help bridge that gap and help create an enabling environment for people to be able to transition easily into the workspace. In a changing world, we really do not need to come to a university environment and start talking to them about how to get jobs. That will interpret to be that universities are being proposed to produce people to work. And if you look at the Nigeria economy currently, we have 53.4% uh, of you that are unemployed. And out of that number, 34% have got advanced degree. That is a minimum of a bachelor's degree. That means something is wrong. Another way to address the challenge of employability skill in this graduate employment is to incorporate the learning of these skills in the curriculum of higher education. The excited students are enlightened on several sessions, including problem solving and critical thinking, one thing employers want. We need to introduce more entrepreneurship classes, more employability classes into the curriculum. Because a lot of times, you know, they don't even know the business aspect of what it is they are studying. Maybe until final year and then you start rushing it up. And that is really important because if you are studying something and you can't monetize it or you can't make a living out of it, then I think the aim has been defeated. The ability of uh, employees to actually solve problems in organization is of great importance and great need. And uh, many employ employers of labor, we agree that sometimes it's actually becoming a scarce commodity. And I think it has also helped me to shape the mentality that I shouldn't just keep my ideas to myself. I need to share it with people that can help me, um, yes, actualize it. Uh, I will I'll try because innovation is, is what we change every, is what changes everything. So I will try to innovate. Uh, if I can innovate and people see what I have at hand, they see what I can do, 
uh, I think I'll be employed. The unemployment trend among youth in Nigeria is startling, and the trajectory is not likely to change soon unless a drastic and holistic approach is adapted. Uh, my guest is Simon Adozi of uh, Adozilian Homes. He is a highly skilled real estate investment coach, trainer, investor, and a marketing and sales strategist. Passionate about making every Nigerian a homeowner without stress and employing the best possible flexible payment option available. Well, Simon is known in the real estate industry for his integrity and excellence in service delivery. He has over the years earned the reputation of being someone in whom his clientele can put their trust on because of his customer-oriented approach to business and superb service delivery. Many thanks for joining us, Simon, on Business Insight on Plus TV Africa. Okay. Yeah, it is our pleasure. Let's start this way. Uh, 2023, the first quarter just uh, went by. This is the start of the second quarter. So how would you say, uh, uh, let's start uh, with the first quarter. How did it really uh, do in uh, Nigeria, uh, considering the fact that we had elections and issues uh, before the election, after election? How did the first quarter thrive in the real estate business? Well, just like every other sector, um, the real estate sector had its own... Um, Downs, let me use that word because uh, tension was high. Mm -hmm. Investors were not willing to drop money. Everybody wanted to be liquid. You know, cash crunch, everything affected the real estate industry. For us in the construction too, um, the cash crunch was a big challenge because <laughs> you pay people uh, their daily wages and you don't have cash mm. to pay them their daily wages. So everything was, you know, it was on the low. I, I must tell you, that's what happened in the first quarter. But uh, just after the election, things are beginning to pick up and um, we're grateful for that. Okay, so fine now. Let's slide on to uh, Q2 uh, 2023. Uh, the elections are over and uh, there's, there are prospects for uh, this year. So how would you, let's just try to uh, extrapolate and see how the year 2023 would be uh, for the real estate sector. Do you see uh, uh, great opportunities? Do you see a boom or how exactly do you think uh, the rest of the quarters uh, would actually be like? Oh, well. uh, Real estate is one thing. Housing demand mm. is on the high. Mm -hmm. So you, you, what we expect or what we project in 2023 is that uh, some new owners are going to come into the industry, mm -hmm. and uh, which is making the market more, um, expanding the market more. Right. Um, the economy of Lagos on its own, mm -hmm. as long as it is growing, mm -hmm. the real estate demand is also going to be growing. So. We are envisaging that um, the real estate market would actually grow. There are a lot of investors that are now willing to come in mm -hmm. because if you have stability in government, you will have more foreign direct investment than you have more people. When the people are prosperous, I mean, mm -hmm. they will, shelter is a basic necessity mm -hmm. of life. So they would like naturally or literally go for it. So oh, right. good projection for the rest of the year. Okay, uh, for experts are saying that uh, in Lagos, uh, between 2021 to 2023, yeah. that there is supposed to be like a 50% in sales of commercial and residential real estate uh, in this um, state. Yeah. How true 50 is that? 50% increase. Yeah, because every day in Lagos, you see people trooping in. Now, because Lagos is a, a more secured and more stable economy. Yeah. So you expect that people would literally migrate into this urban lifestyle. So people migrate to, London, uh, to Lagos on a daily basis. So the demand for accommodation is going high. Now for commercial properties, because people are actually, um, they don't just want to live in their houses for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. They need to go, they need to walk somewhere, they need to have fun somewhere, they need to unwind and do all that. So it is actually increasing the cost of commercial property. And when people are prosperous, they start businesses. So it, is, it has given a 50% increase yeah, on commercial and uh, residential properties. Since um, Lagos has a stable economy, I just keep using that word. Okay, Lagos economy is stable. And uh, last year, uh, the Lagos state government talked about uh, its um, economic outlook for the next 30 years uh, yeah. with the uh, a prospect of uh, an international airport uh, at the oh, Lekki uh, Zone. And of course, uh, uh, with the 
you know, the fourth mainland bridge and yeah. all of that. So what are the opportunities there of uh, when all of these uh, projects are coming full speed? Okay, I, I'll give you a, a practical example, right? Mm -hmm. Before the... Um, before they signed off on the International Airport, the Fort Mainland Bridge, mm. a plot of land around that area was selling for, yeah, way below five million naira. Mm. But as we speak, it's going for between 25 to Whoa. 35 to 40 million naira. Wow. That's what... Uh, that's over 500 percent. That's over 500 percent. That's how to bring economic gain mm. to the people. So that's why most times, you see, um, if you want to advise someone to invest in real estate, you say invest when nobody's going there. Mm. Because when they start coming there, you are they're already there reaping the fruit. In short, if you are the one welcoming people to that place, <laughs> yeah. you become the landlord of yeah. that certain area. So that's what we have advised people. I've been in real estate for over nine years now. Mm. And I've, we've been doing that advice. Hey, come and buy this area. Because we envisage that... Uh, proper economic planning had been done for Lagos State, looking at the Lagos State master plan. Mm. And we know that something good, something huge like this is going to come here. Yeah. And I want to commend the effort of the government for seeing it through, because that is another uh, uh, thing. It is good to promise, mm. and it is you have, you need a government that is uh, courageous enough to now see the plan through. That is what this administration has been able to do. And they have brought wealth to people that actually invested in mm. that part of town. So that is what the third main, uh, the fourth mainland bridge and the international airport have done to people that own property there. And they are also moving a lot of people to uh, getting commercial and residential properties over that over those places. Okay, let's talk about uh, residential um, properties uh, or maybe just uh, rentals and yeah. everything. Because it seems to be uh, skyrocketing by the day uh, because uh, a lot of people uh, tell me that uh, they are looking for just um, maybe a small apartment yeah. and uh, it goes uh, as much as um, the least they could get is about over 600 depends on the location in yes. Lagos. so what, what what could be attributed for the rising cost of uh, rented apartments okay really? good so i mean i mean i'm on the field mm. so i literally understand what you're talking about right so um I have a project in Ekwe which I had to now get the accommodation for my staffs, mm. and it will be surprising to know that a two-bedroom flat in Ekwe that um, it's uh, just average. Uh, we got it for seven hundred thousand for a two-bedroom flat for in Ekwe, in Ekwe, Lagos <laughs> State. <laughs> so, this is it. When I try to talk to the landlord and say, "Why are you? Why is it this, this expensive?" Mm. The landlord asks me, "Is bag of cement?" Bag of cement is even more expensive in Ekwe mm. than it is in main Lagos because it might give you up to a hundred or two hundred naira difference because they'll tell you it's cost of transportation. So everything in the economy is connected. So it is not even about location right now. It is about everybody is buying building material at an expensive rate. Now, and you do not expect me not to get at least between eight to ten percent of the value of my house mm. per annum. Mm. Yeah, that's how it's calculated for oh, me wow. to know that I have done a good real estate investment. So if I buy a house for 60 million, I should be able to rent it out for at least 4 million, oh, if wow. not 6 million. You <laughs> understand? So that's, that, that's basic mathematics. So uh, cost of building materials are increasing. Rent most definitely would increase. Cost of land is increasing too. Rent most definitely would increase so that's how it works in in the economics of things so it is not until government steps in mm. with a form of regulation but before government can regulate they will have to regulate what the cost mm. of building material is but hey as long as the people are prosperous i don't think paying rent is the issue is me getting where to put in my time and energy work Mm. get that rent to uh, get that money to pay, my to pay my rent so everybody yeah. in the economy prospers that's how to build an economy state okay so let's talk about um, affordable housing yes, in nigeria because over time different administrations uh, come and go they talk about uh, building houses that will cater to the needs of uh, those who don't really earn well but at the end of the day there is 
uh, people cannot even afford them over time. But back in the day, uh, there were mortgage um, banks and uh, mortgage financing, and people actually had their own houses. But as it has, though taking um, a back seat uh, in the country, this, there's no one talks about mortgage financing, and even when you tell people about mortgage, about mortgage they seem to get discouraged when you uh, they talk about um, the, the cost of it and everything. Yeah. So why can't we look in that direction? Maybe uh, uh, fronting or founding um, mortgage banks in the country so that um, people can actually apply so long as they meet the conditions, they can actually uh, own their own houses and pay over time. It's interesting to know that uh, real estate it, as it itself, or providing housing, is actually a product of the bank. Mm. That's where it started. The bank uh, actually brought out this product called housing or real estate mm. to cater to uh, individuals that work while they are working, they take a certain uh, percentage of their money for mm -hmm. a long period of time and everybody is good. So that's how real estate actually is. Real mm -hmm. estate is a banking product, mm -hmm. right? But we do not operate it like that here. Um, I'll, I'll put it this way. So I, as a real estate developer, I'm supposed to be a contractor to the banks, which mm -hmm. means if I have a project, I'm supposed to get funding from the banks put that project in place, the bank goes to sell to clients that project and the bank arranges with them to say, okay, pay within 12, within uh, 13 years, within 14 years, mm -hmm. as long as they have done due diligence on them and all that. I mm -hmm. do not even have a business as a real estate uh, construction person or as a real estate developer dealing with clients. I'm supposed to deal directly with banks and focus on pure construction. But that's not how we do it here. Mm -hmm. So I'm the one chasing my market. I'm the one funding myself. I'm the one looking for money. I'm the one doing literally everything for myself. Mm -hmm. So that leaves, uh, it, it makes housing expensive. It makes the end product expensive. But how it works in other <laughs> claims. claims is that I want a house. I look for an initial deposit. I approach a bank. Mm. The bank gives me this house and says, okay, you pay within 15 years. 15 years. Mm. That's how it's supposed to work. You, as someone employed, you are not supposed to worry yourself too much mm -hmm. about how you can save up to 60 million to buy a house. Mm -hmm. You do not have a, uh, a business with that kind of amount. What you just need is, okay, um, I have... I have saved up or I have uh, done business and I have saved up 6 million as an initial deposit, 10%, mm -hmm. and the bank gives you a house. So everything, they, they put it in a mortgage plan, so you, you are like paying the bank rent mm -hmm. over a period of time. And that's, that's how financial institutions are supposed to work. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to my friends and I said, real estate is, a, is purely a financial product, mm -hmm. not even... So, we are focusing on construction. No, 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 no. We do pure finance in real estate. Mm. So we have products that uh, in my uh, company, we give people up to 18 months to spread payment uh, for if they are subscribing to a unit. Mm. But I do, literally, I do not have a business doing that. But okay. I, that's where just I because myself. we're not doing um, yeah. the right way, we're just putting them square holes exactly. in them. Exactly. Square holes in holes. Not really in the country. working. All right. Yeah. yeah. It is still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We still have um, Simon Adozi with us. We'll take a quick break and um, there are more to expect when we return to join us again. All right, welcome back to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa as we look at um, the opportunities in real estate and how we can make them housing better in Lagos and Nigeria, you know, in general. My guest uh, is uh, Simon Adozi. Simon, uh, there's been this talk about um, smart homes and uh, lots of Nigerians are really uh, trying to appreciate it. Can you really explain it to us and if it's something that can be affordable by a regular white collar uh, <laughs> okay. So let's start. Let me start yeah. from this statement. Um, yeah. Any country that does not embrace technology mm. would soon be obsolete. Mm. So um, we use smartphones, we use smart devices. Why can't our houses be smart? So, um, and it's just it's just a subject of um, 
uh, putting smart devices in the house mm -hmm. that uh, as I'm here, that will make life convenient for me and for anyone that decides to buy into it. I want to be here uh, just stepping out of my office and uh, no one is at home. I want to be able to come from my device and I'm able to switch on my air mm. conditioners because I don't want to get sweaty when I enter the house. Yeah. I should be able to control my space and say light goes off and it mm. goes off, cutting part. You know, those are the kind of things that come with smart, house, uh, smart houses. But is it cheap? Is it affordable? Mm. For now, no. Because mm. those things, uh, we are still struggling. They're like with, luxury right now. Yes, we are still struggling with uh, internet, uh, you know, spread. We are still struggling with um, um, how to use smart devices. Mm. We, we, that's, the, uh, <laughs> that's the educational part of it mm -hmm. and all that. So smart devices, all our houses are... The one I develop, yeah. they are semi-smart. Semi-smart is that you can operate basic facilities from the comfort of your office anywhere. But they are not. They come as a luxury part of uh, the real estate development. But we'll get there. Okay. We'll get there absolutely because, see, we would embrace this technology and we'll mm. get there. Okay. So uh, aside from the issue of uh, mortgage and uh, technology and all of that, uh, what are some other critical areas uh, that need to be addressed so that we can reposition uh, the housing and real estate sector? We need to define our urban spaces. We need to open up more urban places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so that the concentration won't be in a certain city called Lagos, or won't be in a certain location called Aja mm -hmm. or won't be in a certain location called Lekki or something like that. That is when you when you gather people in a lot of place, there's a lot of competition. And mm -hmm. listen, Nigeria is blessed with vast amount of land. Mm -hmm. So create cities out of the cities. Create cities that are a bit far from the cities. I want to walk, live and play somewhere else. I do not even want the uh, noise and uh, um, everything that comes with the legal stress. So leave me in Ekwe. Develop Ekwe as a city. What do you even need to develop a city? Give us good roads. Give us access to uh, good electricity. And I think we are done. Mm -hmm. We would literally do the whole thing on our, by ourselves. So open up new places for people to be able to go. Open up Badagri. There's a train. There's a blue line that runs there now. So it's easy for me to commute. So open up Badagri, open up Ekbe, Korodu, open up new, new places so you can be able to, you know, that's, that's a problem. People do, urbanization is a problem. Everybody wants to live in Lekki. Mm. Okay, so what you're saying is that um, as Lagos is also going, um, states like um, Kebe, Adamawa should also be moving in that direction so it will not be too concentrated in one spot. Straight up. Mm. If, uh, now... Ogun State, Abiokuta, mm -hmm. Ibadan, they are yes. benefiting from this already. But they're close so, to Lagos. Yes, they are plugging into the master mm -hmm. plan. What's Lagos master plan? Let's do the same. Let's replicate. Okay. You can replicate this all over the country. And mm -hmm. I don't need to live in Lagos before I can earn a decent living. Mm -hmm. People just feel that Lagos, you people in Lagos, they pay them higher than they pay them in mm -hmm. Edo State. So everybody wants to move to Lagos. I mean, you want to move to where they pay you higher. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> that's that's one thing we need to address. Okay. Organization, open and see. Mm. Let's develop at uh, a good. But still talking about this urbanization yeah. that you've talked about, uh, is yeah. it just um, uh, the role of the government that is needed, or what about the place of um, private public partnership? So private pa uh, partnership works when government provides infrastructure like ports. Okay. So if the port is considered only in Lagos. Mm -hmm. I can locate my business headquarters mm -hmm. in Edo State because that would be that would mean I, extra cost moving from Lagos to Edo State. So, but if I have a truck, if I have a port in Worry, mm -hmm. it's just an hour instead of coming to Lagos. That is over five hours to yeah. get to Benin. So those are the things for organization. Government needs to provide the basic infrastructure, mm -hmm. and most of these infrastructures, they are mostly in the hands of the federal government. They're in the exclusive list. Right. Provide ports, provide good uh, cargo airports, provide this, provide that. But that it's, is changing right now. For instance, uh, for power distribution yeah. and generation, uh, it has actually been uh, devolved so that um, state government can actually uh, generate and um, you know, distribute your own. Yes, but uh, there are no controls. 
Mm. <laughs> that's another that's a topic for another day. Okay, as yeah. we round off now, yeah. um, um, Simon, let's talk about people who uh, would actually want to be homeowners, right. but uh, they feel that uh, because of what they do, it could be like a, a Herculean task yeah. uh, to get that done. They're looking at what they earn, but is it possible for the average Nigerian to be a homeowner? And if it is possible, how can he go about that in closing? Good. So my people will say it is you who doesn't ask a question that gets missing. Mm. Yeah. If you do not ask questions, you always get lost. So there are ways that people have been able to own homes without uh, doling out uh, 50, 60 million at once. Mm. Right. So you can do some uh, form of initial deposit. Mm -hmm. Now, people actually want to start from owning a house in mm. probably central Lekki which is way above your league. So look for where there are, there are, there are houses that are, uh, I know some bungalows that still sell for between 25 to 30 million mm. and you can pay that within 18 months. Mm. You know, you can have 18 months spread. That's for if you want to buy a house outrightly. Mm. Now, some people will start from buying plots of land. So plot of land ranges from 2.5 million and you do not even have to pay once. Mm -hmm. So it is when you ask questions, when you ask the expert that you now know the step-by-step -step measures that you can get to own uh, ownership. For us at that, um, at the Zillion Home, which I represent, we have certain landed properties that people can invest in within 12 to 18 months. Oh, and so that, you know? Okay. Yeah, before we start taking advert. So no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so no, we'll say a very big thank you to you yeah. for all of the useful insight that you have shared. Yeah. And to know that actually these things are possible. It's just like you said, yeah. asking the right questions, um, getting knowledge. And uh, before you know it, uh, with proper planning, you can actually be a landlord of your own. Yes. All right, thank you so much, uh, uh, Simon, Simon Adozi of uh, Adozi Leon yeah, um, Homes, and he's also a certified realtor. Thanks for joining us on thank Business Insight. Thank you so much Insight. for having me. I appreciate that. Thank All right, uh, that's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin Kadoni. Let's do it again next time. Bye for now.